Before we jump right into the topic, let's learn some basic terms. When your jaw moves laterally or side to side, the side it moves toward is called the working side. That's where the teeth touch and help guide the movement. The other side is the non-working side, where teeth usually stay apart. Canine guidance occurs when only the canines on the working side touch during these side movements, thereby protecting the other teeth. But sometimes, instead of just the canines, a few teeth like premolars and molars join in. That's called group function. Canine guidance and group function are critical concepts in restorative dentistry. Knowing when to use each is key to designing functional and long-lasting prosthetic work. Canines, as we know, are the strongest teeth in the jaws, with the longest root and the strongest pedial support. That's why they are often called the cornerstones of the mouth. It refers to the disocclusion or separation of all the posterior teeth during lateral excursive or side-to-side -side jaw movements. During these movements, the only teeth that make contact are your canines. Canines guide the jaw during these lateral movements away from maximum intercuspation, helping it slide safely and smoothly, which is why it's called canine guidance. The entire movement is guided by the canine. To learn more about maximum intercuspation, watch my video on it in the tooth morphology and occlusion playlist. Group function, on the other hand, occurs when not just the canine, but also multiple teeth make contact during these lateral movements on the working side. This contact can involve the canine along with premolars, molars, or all of them together. In group function, the posterior teeth remain in contact and do not fully disengage on the working side. Now let's break down the significance of canine guidance in group function. Our posterior teeth are designed to handle vertical forces, but they are not well suited for lateral excursive movements. That's why they should stay apart during side movements, and that's exactly what canine guidance helps achieve. Even during chewing, while we grind food, canine guidance helps maintain a narrow chewing cycle, guiding the jaw to rely mostly on vertical forces and minimizing harmful lateral stress. So in a nutshell, canine guidance promotes disocclusion of the posterior teeth on both the working and non-working sides during lateral jaw movements, helping to avoid heavy lateral forces on these teeth. Canine guidance also helps prevent wear and tear of the posterior teeth and reduces strain on the masticatory muscles and the temporomandibular joint. It's often the preferred occlusal scheme in young healthy patients and is especially important when designing crowns, veneers, or occlusal splints. However, in some cases like class 2 or class 3 malocclusions where the canines are either too forward or too backwards, they do not contact during these lateral movements. In these situations, we entirely rely on group function. Group function promotes disocclusion of the posterior teeth on the working side by progressive contact of the canine first premolar, second premolar, and mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar on the working side. Group function also becomes necessary in patients with missing or worn down canines, especially in older adults, where it often becomes the natural occlusal pattern. And as mentioned earlier, in class 2 or class 3 malocclusions, group function becomes the primary form of occlusal guidance. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.